David Barnson with me this Tuesday morning is never afraid to get into politics. For the sake of the domestic vote, the Biden-Harris team pressuring Israel to go easy on Hamas. I can hardly believe it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not even sure it's the right political thing because there are, of course, Jewish voters that care about this, too. I think you're right. It's disgusting morally. They're worried about the margin in Michigan. But um, I, I think it's a miscalculation all around. I think it shows weakness. And then I certainly think it hurts with more moderate Jewish voters that feel like they're being sold out. Uh, David, would you stay there for a moment? I'll get to the market in a second. Headline in the Wall Street Journal. It reads, Americans are really, really bullish on stocks. That's in the Wall Street Journal. Big headline. So the rally continues? That's the most bearish headline you could possibly get. <laughs> and, and history That's is abundantly point. clear here. Right. Um, when sentiment gets very high, then it's usually a very contrarian signal. Uh, the VIX has not been really all that high. Uh, most of the year it was very low. It spiked up in early August. It's come down. That's when people are showing their fear of the market. Uh, Wall Street Journal is capturing it. There's a lot of positive yeah. sentiment. I'm and just the it. calendar, isn't September the worst month of the year historically for the stock market? You know, I have a problem with that stat because it's true except for all the months it isn't. And some <laughs> of the Septembers have been so bad, like, you know, September of 2008, it brings the averages down. Mm. Yeah, that was a bad one. September that was a pretty bad one. That was as bad as it gets. I still have nightmares. I, <laughs> don't we all? Yeah. Um, look, well, I've asked you this before. Does the market care about Harris and her policies? The market will care about who ends up being president and what the policies end up being. The market in early September doesn't care because it doesn't know who's going to win the election, doesn't know what either candidate's policies are, and it doesn't know who's going to win the Senate. The Senate is what matters most. If the Republicans win Montana, the market will breathe easy. That's it? That's it because it holds divided government in check, worst case scenario. You don't get those huge tax increases yeah. if, they're Demo if the Republicans take the Senate. That's exactly right. All right. Stay there, please. More from you later. But I think the minimum standard for a presidential candidate is taking questions and speaking to reporters. I'd call it a new basement strategy. And David, my question is, how long can she keep up a new basement strategy all the way through to the election? Uh, it, it appears to have gone on longer than I would have expected so far. But what happens is the Trump campaign needs to hit her so hard on issues that she has to come out and defend herself. That's the key here. The Trump campaign staying disciplined to make her have to respond on issues and policies. Okay, well, I can see that. David. It can work. It can work. All right. You really turned your nose up on that uh, when we were looking at Apple going above 250. What's your problem? Well, first of all, I was pointing out that that's 8% from here. So that's a pretty big risk to try to get 8% over the next year or so. When it's 32 times forward earnings, 35 times backwards earnings, and the explanation about AI commanding a higher price on the phone and making people upgrade and then it just all sounds to me like a solution in search of a problem. Do you need your phone to tell you how you feel when you respond, when your yep. wife texts you how you're feeling? To, I just don't believe it. I don't think there's that a demand end, for this. NVIDIA is down 4%. Broadcom's down. The tech stocks, the, the AI stocks are down today because as we talk about potential recession risk and all these costs of AI spending, can you justify it if the economy slows down? Okay. And, right. and, and NVIDIA is down about almost 20% from where it was. Yes. And I think a lot of that speaks to what Lauren's point is, the demand. People are wondering, is, is this all really necessary? And I keep waiting for someone. I was excited for his answer to your question. But then I heard it. I, again, I just am not convinced that people are excited for that. All right. And I read that Norway, 94% of all cars sold in Norway in August, that's about 11,000 cars, were EVs. And a fifth of them were Teslas. Ironic, isn't it, that, that, that Norway has gone almost all electric, mm -hmm. and they are the king of offshore oil mm -hmm. drilling. Let's not That's forget that. That's what I thought. All right, what do you got, David? <laughs> I, I, the entire 5,000-person population in Norway is really into electric cars. I can say this. I'm from Denmark, so uh, the Scandinavian countries That's do That's why like. you're tall. Well, maybe. <laughs> There's five million Norwegians, isn't there? I'm being sarcastic, Stuart. Uh, uh, You've heard me do that Capital before. Norway. On occasion. <laughs> Capital Norway, Stuart. Oslo. Uh, take a look at Intel, please. <laughs> We're going to go through this today. Uh, they're at risk of being removed from the Dow 30, I, aren't they? It seems so. The shares are down about 60% this year. Do you care? 
Um, they should take any company out of the Dow as soon as they cut the dividend. And Intel cut their dividend. Yeah, and so it. Intel doesn't have a reputation left to care about. Uh, this has been an atrocious couple of years. Bad execution. And they were very, very overpriced in the late 90s, but they performed real well. Uh, you know, to put NVIDIA in at this time would risk the same thing. Yeah. You're putting it in at a big peak when it's trading at 70 times earnings. You don't like Intel much, do you? It's just, look, when you cut a dividend, you're dead to they me, completely and they should it. be dead to the Dow. They completely like you're dead to the Bonson Group. Well, the last change was February. Walgreens out, Amazon in. And when they cut Walgreens out, it had been down 75%. So let's start getting ahead of this a little bit to my friends at the Dow. Instead of waiting until they drop 70% to cut them out. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, let's move on from there. Weight loss drugs. Yeah. Helping to prevent COVID deaths? I mean, is it like the wonder drug? So the studies show that the key component in the weight loss drugs, all of them, um, actually helps with alleviate the COVID symptoms, how severe they get, and also lowers the 33% chance lower death rate. Do you have any comment on wonder drugs? Well, I do. I mean, in fairness, you know, I always up 140% on okay. this drug already. So I just think it's largely priced in. And it is really bothers me when they're saying, oh, the weight loss drugs are helping cure COVID deaths. Where were they during COVID to say that just obesity at large was one of the problems with COVID? They never talked about that as the leading comorbidity, which it was. So naturally, weight loss helps decrease all kinds of health benefits. That, that's the secret of it, isn't it? It helps all kinds of... It, conditions if you lose significant weight. Who could have ever guessed that? Yeah, right. <laughs> kind of obvious. <laughs> well, Doc Siegel is going to be discussing this a bit later in the show. Uh, you brought a couple of dividend picks and you're going to, I know, Clorox. You've been there before. Yeah. Speaking of during the COVID era, remember the wipes? Oh, Everyone yeah. was trying to get a hold of COVID. Uh, excuse me. Clorox was way down. It's a good dividend grower up a little here today. Um, but they were worried about a cyber attack that happened earlier. It was going to hold it down for a while. It's way past that. Clorox, a low beta, low volatility, boring name that just keeps growing earnings. Next one is Cisco Systems. I brought that up because I still like this old tech theme. You talk about stocks that were overpriced in the 90s, have performed really well. Cisco had a heck of a quarter that they just announced. And again, at a three and a half percent dividend, that's growing seven, eight, nine percent a year. Cisco at $50 is a great buy. I'm sorry. What's it pay now? Dividend? Three and a half today at purchase. And going up every single year. Got it. Thank you, David. Look, I hate to say it, but anti-Semitism is making a return to college campuses this fall. And it's a disgraceful thing. There's only one thing to do. The students have to be expelled that are violating rules, camping out in the middle of the campus, doing this radical behavior. I mean, I'm glad the three college presidents are gone, but let's get rid of the 300 or 3,000 radical students. That went over the line. Um, expel them. Quit coddling these kids. They yes. need to learn how the world works. We cannot have that return to it. Well, it's not return to America. It's appear in America. Yeah, but it's only this demographic and it's only facilitated on college campuses. Whatever happened to safe spaces? Not very safe for Jewish people right now. It's not fair. And not if it was black people being perse no. persecuted like this, it's an entirely different story. Yeah. All right. Thank you for joining us for the hour, David. Always a pleasure. Thank you, sir.